This October at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Blackpool Pleasure Beach are introducing Freak Nights. New for 2019, they're going bigger, scarier and better than ever before for their Halloween offering. Pleasure Beach are joining the big boys as far as Halloween goes and I can't wait to see it. And in today's video I'm going to be talking about what I know about the Freak Nights at Blackpool Pleasure Beach which I believe to be running from the 27th of October through to the 31st of October. I'll talk about why I think it's those dates shortly. Also, I'll be taking a look at what I think they're going to do for those Freak Nights and also what I know about those Freak Nights. Also, I'll be hearing from Mark later on in the video, but let's get straight to it. So, Halloween is running at Blackpool Pleasure Beach this year from the 12th of October through to the 31st of October. That's according to the Blackpool Pleasure Beach website. However, Freak Nights is something that was teased on Amanda Thompson's Twitter page about six months ago now, it was quite a while ago. There's a bit of promo arc put out there, a bit of information, nothing too revealing about the project or about the event that's going to be happening, just a little bit of information was put out there and of course it got everyone talking. We're now into August, we're at that point where Pleasure Beach have started to do auditions to get their cast, they've started to make firm plans on what they're going to do. I've got a feeling behind the scenes in the workshops they'll probably have a lot of the props made up ready for what they're going to be doing this year at Halloween. So like I say, as far as I know, according to Blackpool Pleasure Beach's website, Halloween in terms of Vampire Beach, Rugru, the, the big werewolf, Nick Tunes and a couple of other things from Team Nick are going to be happening from the 12th of October through to the 31st of October. I'm pretty sure that's the date. I'm sure that's what I've seen on Blackpool Pleasure Beach's website. However, it's not confirmed as yet what date the Freak Nights will start. However, I believe they're going to start on the 27th of October and run through to the 31st of October. Why do I think that? Well, recently Blackpool Pleasure Beach put out for rehearsals, auditions and the like for Freak Nights. Now, on that page, it said that all cast members needed to be available from the 27th of October through to the 31st of October. Now, interestingly, it also said that the actors would need to be available between 4pm and midnight. So that's where the first debating point comes from. Does that mean Blackpool Pleasure Beach is going to be open through to midnight in the last week of October? It's an interesting one, because on the website there's nothing to suggest that the park is going to be open that late. However, there's no reason why Blackpool Pleasure Beach couldn't have a horror maze or a scare maze, however you want to put it, open through to midnight. And there's a couple of places in Blackpool Pleasure Beach where they could do that. Now, me and Mark off camera had a bit of a chat about what we think Blackpool Pleasure Beach is going to do in terms of these freak nights. Are they going to go big with mazes? Are they just going to have scare zones? Are they not really going to do that much at all? Is it just an event in name and nothing else? Well, from what I'm hearing, between 50 and 100 people are going to be cast for Halloween at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That suggests to me they're doing more than just a scare zone or just some performances by the fountain. I've got a feeling they're going big. And I know it's only on for a week, the Freak Nights, or from what we can see, it's only on for a week. But I think that for an event like this, Pleasure Beach have got to start small. You've got to look at the way that Alton Towers and Fort Park and other parks have started there, Fright Night, Scare Fest, Halloween events, however you want to put it. They didn't start where they are now, they had to start somewhere. And I remember Scarefest at Alton Towers in 2007, and it was quite a big event, but I don't remember it being like a massive event, I don't remember it being like getting the wide scale interest that Scarefest now gets. And also Fright Nights at Fort Park, I can't remember exactly when it started, but I remember my first ever visit to Fort Park was in 2005 at Fright Nights. And again, I remember it being a fairly sizeable event, but it was nothing on the scale of the event that we saw for Friday Nights last year, as an example. But moving back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, from what I can see, the event is going to run for Freak Nights, not Halloween as the whole thing. Freak Nights is going to run from the 27th of October through to the 31st of October. And I think the first thing that I think that they're going to do, and something I really want to talk about in this video, I don't know this for definite, and I know that if this is true, a couple of people at Blackpool Pleasure Beach will be like, oh no, he's got it right. But I could get it wrong. So, first prediction, I think the old Magnolia Calf, which is by the Ghost Train, which is 
the cafe where you used to go in, you used to sit, and you used to be able to see the gold mine and the river caves interacting. If you've been going to Blackpool Pleasure Beach for as long as me, you'll know exactly where I mean. The Magnolia Cafe is no longer open, it's no longer used really other than the foyer where you can go in and get ice cream, sit down and watch the ghost train, you can't go into the back area. That back area is now used for the Nickelodeon Land Christmas Grotto, I can't remember the exact name, there is a video on the channel, I'll put a card in the top of the screen, although I'm sure in August you probably won't want to watch a Christmas video. But last year we went to Santa's Grotto, me and Becca did with our son Charlie, we took him and that was all in the back area of the Magnolia Calf, which we said at the time they could use this for Halloween. And when we got thinking about these freak nights at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the first thing I thought was they're going to use the Magnolia Calf for something. So that is my first prediction. I do think they're going to use that building for a Halloween scare maze. And the reason I think that is because it's right next to the arena as well. You could keep that building open until 10, 11 or 12 at night and have the rest of the park clear because once people are done in that maze they can walk straight into the arena and out of the park so that's my prediction what do I think is going to be in there? I think it's going to be a maze but I have absolutely no idea what kind of theme it's going to have this is not something that Pleasure Beach have done before other than obviously Passage del Terra which is strictly speaking not something that they do it's something that is outsourced it's I don't know the I don't know the company that run Passage del Terra's name. It might well be called Passage del Terra. I'm sure someone who's a scare fan will be able to tell me in the comments. So please do. But I would imagine for this sort of thing, if Pleasure Beach really want to make an impact, I can imagine that they're getting their help. They might be getting help from somewhere like Farmageddon, which is also local. I don't know. There's a couple of other scare sort of attractions escape rooms and things like that in the north which maybe will be helping Blackpool Pleasure Beach with this event that is of course something I really don't know for definite that's just something that I think that's going to happen I've just got a feeling that they're going to look at it and go we want to do this properly we don't do this kind of thing very often when to start off we need to get the help of someone like Farmageddon someone like Passage del Terra who they might seek for help and say look we're doing this event, we need a bit of help with starting it up. Next year we might not need your help, but for now, we've not done this kind of thing before. Please help us. So that is something that, that may happen, and it would be cool if that's happening, especially if somewhere like Farmageddon, which is local, if the people who create the mazes up there help Blackpool Pleasure Beach, we are in for a big treat. I will put a card in the top of the screen for Farmageddon for the vlog that we did there last year. We had an amazing time at Farmageddon. My voice is about to go because I need a drink, so while I have a drink, I'm going to pass you over to Mark, who did some filming on this subject subject the other day, Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I want to just maybe start small, maybe one or two mazes, maybe even a scur zone, for example, and then, and then work on it from there. Obviously, we're all seeing that they've got actors from 4 till 12. Personally, I don't see them staying open till 12. Yeah. I think that's just the uh, because they close the line at 10 and if there's an hour queue then it allows the actors that little bit of time to, to work that queue without being rushed and then they can get everyone out for maybe 12 o'clock. Yeah, so as an example, the park opening hours might be, well, Halloween may run from 4pm till 10pm but the queue for the mazes may stay open till 10 o'clock and then the actors may need to stay on till 11 or midnight yeah. because the queue needs to be run off. Yeah. Whereas if it was bang on, you finish at 10 o'clock, the queue for the maids would have to close perhaps at 7, 8 o'clock. Yeah. And that's when I want everyone to experience it. If they've said close it at 10, everyone's in the queue, get some good run through as well. Yeah. The actors are not thinking, oh, I'm fucking off in five oh, minutes. Know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to rush through everything. They still get that same experience. I think they'll probably do it around where Wild Mouse used to be. Yeah. Trauma Towers. So if they kept like two skirt zones in that area, it means they can close the rest of the park at 10 o'clock anyway. Yeah. And get everyone out. And then they're only leaving a small area. You've still got the drinks, you've still got everything else opening around it that they can use. They're just closing a part of the park off so they're not staffing the whole park. You just need to staff a certain area of it. Now that we've heard from Mark, it's time to 
Talk about the rest of my predictions for Freak Nights at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Of course, I was there when Mark did his predictions and it was interesting to hear his thoughts and ideas for the event. Like I say, my big prediction for this is that Blackpool Pleasure Beach are going to use the old Magnolia calf for a scare maze. I really, really hope that happens. I just think that will be absolutely amazing. And I do think that's the thing on the event that will be open until midnight. I think that's why the cast members need to be available until midnight. I don't think that the event will be advertised as we're keeping this open till 12 o'clock. What I think is going to happen is it will probably close, like the queue line for this maze will probably close at 10 o'clock or something like that. Whereas the cast members will be told, look, we need you till 12 o'clock in, in case there's a massive queue or in case it, the park hours get extended or just any reason for them to possibly need to be available till 12 o'clock. I'd imagine that is why it said in the auditions, you need to be available between 4 and midnight. Of course, I'm speculating. I don't know anyone that went to those auditions. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this. I'm sure more information will become available in the next couple of weeks. I do know that Pleasure Beach are really keen to make this a success. Back in February, me and Mike did see some of the props for Freak Nights at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. We weren't allowed to talk about it, post about it, or just say anything about it at the time. And I'm still not going to say what it was because I want to keep Pleasure Beach's trust, obviously, in the future so that we find out about things like this. And it was good to see it. I didn't know what they were planning to use it for at the time. But if they do use what we saw, it will be excellent. And it is very scary, by the way. It made us a little bit nervous when we were in the workshop and we saw it getting plugged in and used. So, yeah, it's something that will scare people. That's for sure. So moving on, what else do we think they're going to do for Freak Nights at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? Now, of course, there is the question of Will they use the Wild Mouse site for a maze? I'm not so sure they will. It's a small area, but it would be potentially a good area for a little maze. I don't think it's something that you could do massively on there. But it's one of those where you look at it and go, they got a roller coaster on there, so of course they could probably get a scare maze on there if they really wanted to. And then, of course, we've got the question of what they're going to do with the fountain. Are they going to change the colours on the fountain? The fountain can be illuminated, as we've seen over many years now. It has the white lights underneath where the fountain is. Wouldn't it be great if they changed it to be green, red, just eerie colours like that? Also, they could have eerie music on for the fountain shows instead of the national anthems and the pop music and the show music that we hear so often on the fountain shows. It would be good if for that week the Freak Nights is on, that they could have some Halloween themed music on, on the maze, on the maze, on the fountain, when it's doing its 20 minute, 30 minute, every 30 minute show, it'd be excellent if they could do that. Also, I have a thought as well, that they could turn sort of the ghost train area into a massive scare zone. If you think about where you walk down past the ghost train, there's that kind of a narrow walkway down there back towards the fountain, if you think about that scare zone in other parks, they could turn that into a scare zone. It could be that the ghosts and ghouls have escaped from the ghost train and they're protecting the area and stuff like that. There's something that there's so much potential at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have said for years that Blackpool Pleasure Beach is an ideal location for a big Halloween event. You've got the Chinese puzzle maze as well. Of course, they've used that in the past as a themed maze at Halloween, but it's never really had any sort of continuity to it. Actors were either in there scaring everyone at once or they were nowhere to be seen. It was a, it's a strange one really because you could walk through it and get all the actors at once and then nothing for the rest of it, or you could just see no one at all. But I think if they had a structured way through it with the actors set in certain places, spooky music, and stuff like that again, along with Magnolia Calf, I think it would work perfectly for the kind of thing that Pleasure Beach are looking to do on this event. Also, before I do go and let you put your predictions below in the comments, something I've always thought would be amazing for Halloween at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, most of the coasters at Blackpool Pleasure Beach have got train lights. How cool would it be if they covered it with, I don't know how you do it, but how you've seen Fort Park and Towers have done it for years, they illuminate the rides in like red, green, and other eerie colours. Imagine Icon's train lights being red. How spooky would that look? Also, you've got Big Dipper, that's got train lights. Grand National, 
how cool would it be if for this particular event, rather than the train lights being just the usual colour of a white light, how amazing would it be if those lights were red? Especially when you think that Big Dip and Grand National at night, the layouts are pretty dark, so it would look really cool. If you were watching in the distance and you just see the Big Dipper's headlights in red going over the hills, it would look spooky. Could do the same with the big one. Of course, the big one's lights are different than they used to be. It no longer has the strip lights along the sides. They were amazing. They definitely need to come back. But that's for another subject. So yeah, that's it for my Halloween predictions. I know it's only August. I know some of you might be watching going, oh, for God's sake, the scare season's coming. Pleasure of each experience will be covering theme parks, Halloween events, POVs, water parks, all of that coming for the rest of the season. We've had a quiet couple of weeks on the channel. We've been recharging our batteries, recharging our wallets, ready for what is going to be a massive end to the season. We've got so much coming up in September where I literally don't know when I'm going to sleep. We've got so much coming up in October too. And even when the theme park season ends, we've got plans for coverage at Hyde Park and some parks abroad. So lots coming on Pleasure Beach Experience. Thanks for your support so far in 2019. And hopefully it's going to be an excellent end to what's been an excellent season. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this video what you think Pleasure Beach might do for Halloween and also have you had a good season at Blackpool Pleasure Beach so far. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next Pleasure Beach Experience video.